Felix, to you outside of the camp, for giving England any chance, but to you in camp, he did full of offer what would be a big upset? Yeah, the mood's been good. Uh, we've trained well. Um, everyone's come through fit during the week um, in terms of the back end of the week. So, um, yeah, we're, we're hoping to put in a, an 80 minute performance, something that we feel we probably haven't uh, put together yet in the first three games. So, big focus for us is to try and tie it all together tomorrow. When no one's giving you a job, does the pressure then transfer to Ireland? Uh, you'd have to ask them. Um, for us, you know, we try to stay in our own reality. We're very aware internally of what's what's going well, what needs work. So uh, you'd probably have to ask them. In terms of defence, how big a defensive effort would it take to be I? Yeah, it'll it'll be considerable um, because Ireland are are a great team. Uh, their record. Um, you know, speaks for itself. I think it's two games in 22 that, that they've lost. So um, their ability to score tries from from all over the the field is is is, is it's it's impressive to see the skill sets of the players, uh, forwards, backs. Every single person is a is an option, a passing option. They have multiple players at the line, behind the line, uh, kicking options. So uh, they've a they've a, a very complete attack. And is that where? the execute of this new defensive shape comes into his own and the importance of it is he? Yeah, yeah, it, absolutely. Um, you know, you, like I said, we've got to be on it for 80 minutes uh, because uh, a single lapse, Ireland have shown repeatedly the the, the, the capability to, to cut you open. But on top of that, you, you know, it's not just one department, you know, the entire, the entire game plan needs to come together in order to put Ireland under pressure. Dick, Pete, um, I well, you could talk about the system being high risk, high reward. Do you think that's fair? And if so, are you confident that if some drives quite going in the longer bit tough? But it made sense that there'd be teasing problems or still plenty needed. Yeah, um, I suppose you could you could look at it like that. Um, um, when it comes off, it, you know, it, it it feels that you can you can almost benefit off it in in a, in a very similar way where a ball can bounce out or um, you know somebody can get on the end of a you know a poor pass or an interception and vice versa a misread uh, or you know somebody making a poor decision can result in a, in a in a in a significant break. So um, I would say you can you could probably you know it's fair to say at that stage and yeah there's always you know when you're when anyone's trying to. Uh, do something a little bit different. You've got to stretch your skill set, and um, you just you just want to try and not repeat errors. As a group, is it about having a strength of convictions in the system you built? Mm. I, I, because there's always that balance as well between time and excellent good pro score. And you need time to skip the achievement, but people always want the achievement. Why not? Yeah, yeah, of course. Well, that's the that's the level we're at, um, and that's the you know, it doesn't, it doesn't really get much bigger than, you know, Ireland versus Sing in, 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 a, in a Six Nations game in Twickenham. So, um, yeah, that's the level we're at. Um, but everyone, everyone's committing to, to what we're trying to do internally. So it's um, so that, that's been very enjoyable. And how would it be for you in a band getting style at USC? Not, not, not new in that stuff, but new in, in England, you know, in England capacity. Yeah, no, it's, it's not a, it's not a deal. It's, it's, it's been done before, but of course you can start in twice before, so it's um yeah. It's that's the reality, isn't it? All fresh in the world it's a there's a there's a small number of subs and it's a difficult enough to get to get your foot towards it. Yeah, well, I think when you go into coaching you, you, you have to accept that there's only there's there's so much time that you're gonna be with certain teams before you move on. I mean obviously there's you know plenty of ex English uh, coaching staff members on the Irish team as well. So um yeah, it's just the way it is. Obviously, lucky with number two, but do you think England can get the levels that Ireland are at? You know, did it, I suppose really more than that is TF and the companies we have in there. You know, that there is that room to grow and get to to the Toyin Rabib. So that's it. Yeah, battling on the best. And yeah, of course. Well, I mean, Ireland are obviously benchmark, and you know they're one of the teams that are setting the benchmark at the moment. So uh, you know, there'll be a lot of teams trying to emulate that. The Irish system is, uh, you know. Having come through that system myself as a player and as a coach, you, you know, you, I have an understanding of how how fine tuned it is and how impressive it is, and, and some of the amazing work that's been done there, and the amazing individuals that make that work right down from a from a grassroots level. So, um, you know, 
we're obviously my situation here with England is obviously we're you know we're it's early days still so we're obviously trying to build upon our own performances yet and um I suppose that build the building blocks behind that um will be probably another another few steps down the road for us but yeah, I mean, you look you look at Ireland's performances over the last not just a year, the last three, four years. I think everyone would be looking at them, going, you know, that 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 that's a very impressive team to to try and emulate. Julie, yeah, Albert Phillips. Do you remember the first time you coached against Ireland, and how did that make you feel when you did this? Yeah, I, I coached against Ireland uh, when I was with South Africa in twenty in November uh, twenty one, I think it was. Um, yeah, it's just exact same as now, where you just treat it professionally. Um, that game was in the Aviva, but uh, there's no difference, really. And, and then Steve was saying this week that he thought, despite the result of the World Cup, that Ireland were now the best team in the world. Having worked with both the Springboks and observed Ireland closely, where would you put them at the moment? Yeah, they're, 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 they're very much, I think, you know, there's very little between, uh, say, South Africa, Ireland, New Zealand, uh, Ireland could very easily have been in that World Cup final with for Jordi Barrett um, making a pretty miraculous try saving um, you know tackle or uh, how he held up the ball underneath them all so um, I think between those three teams uh, it's it's very 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 tight uh, but the world rankings are there for a reason so um, is it is it one two and three South Africa Ireland New Zealand I think it's uh, it's very tight between them. Nick. Felix, can you um, talk a little about the things defensively that you've enjoyed seeing with England so far? I think in general, the, the commitment levels um, from the players, uh, the continuous work that they're doing during the week to improve their own individual uh, skill sets um, with regard to that. Obviously, it's a, it's a little bit of a system that <clears throat> some of them may not be used to from their, from their club sides, but it's been met with... Uh, a lot of energy and um, you know commitment to improve upon improve upon you know errors and, and stretching skill sets. Uh, you know it's not just about stretching skill sets and attack. Sometimes you have to stretch your skill set in defense as well. So um, I'd say just the the general commitment has been great. When the players are asking you questions about how they get better, is there is there a kind of consistent line of questioning? Is there one thing about what you're trying to introduce that that, that they're having to think about more than in, ever before? Uh, uh, I think it, it depends um, on position specific because you know obviously you're dealing with all different shapes and sizes and and where, and where people are finding themselves on the field. So uh, it's very different from player to player. Um, um, Felix, how are you finding uh, players across like maybe Lox and the back, uh, the back row and their adaptability to a, um, a variety of positions? Some like Ben Owl, but perhaps Stuart Martin. Uh, yeah, they've been uh, two two guys that you've named there in particular, George and Ben, have been uh, yeah just a pleasure to deal with. Uh, really throwing really uh, throwing themselves at anything you you ask them. Really, uh, they see the opportunity in in everything. They don't see the problems in anything. So even though they might be covering one or two positions, um, there are two guys you could really rely on in terms of uh, trying to you know gobble up the detail uh, and still not try and let you down and uh, both incredibly high work rates, um, not just on the field, off the field as well, in terms of their analysis and, and wanting to improve themselves. So um, yeah, those two guys in particular, it's been a pleasure to work with them. If you can see your probably Jack Nina for an exact number of 14 weeks, that's what it takes to implement a new defensive system with Leinster. Have you got an exact time frame in mind when you're working with England at the moment? Uh, I probably don't have an exact time frame. Um, so no, I don't have an exact time frame. No, I've heard Jack say that a few times. I think I also heard him say he probably probably shouldn't have said that out loud. But um, yeah, you know. Can I also ask? Uh, sorry, if uh, that's okay. With regards to preparing for Ireland this week compared to last year for the World Cup, is this a, a very different outfit or is it more the same? Um, in terms of how I see, how, how I see Ireland. Yes. Um, oh well, there's definitely obviously the change of personnel. Uh, there's a couple of changes in personnel there, uh, but. Largely, it's 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 um, you know a hugely consistent uh, group of players that have been there together. So um, you know, there's probably been a couple of tweaks in terms of what what they're trying to do, but um, it's still done with the same amount of accuracy, intensity. Um, you can see there's a lot of thought, a lot of forethought, and in, in how they're trying to approach the game. And um, 
yeah, so it's slight differences, but still, um, but still, you know, you're aware of the effectiveness of it. Can you always say the key okay, characteristics or traits that you want in the defense to embody in the star? Someone came and watched for the first time. Yeah, that's a good question. Um, I think effort is probably the biggest thing. Um, that um, effort and commitment, I would say, they're probably the two biggest. Um, you know, hopefully anyone watching the game here tomorrow can see that, you know, players won't be, you know, giving up on lost causes. Players will be trying to put opposition skill sets under pressure um, and being fully committed to what, to, to what we... Uh, to what we agree upon. I'm digressing slightly with your old friend Jerry Fatter is now in class with us, which is why I think he's going to go. Yeah, I think, uh, I think Jerry's uh, an amazing coach. Uh, I think he's, um, you know, made, made, made a big decision uh, moving over here to the UK a couple of years ago. Uh, won a premiership with Harlequins. Um, I think they've been tracking very well defensively and um, I think he'll, be, he'll go great. He thinks it is one of the weeks where he actually won the teams and dial up the emotion maybe like this you're always a tactical platter is it a week where you can lean into the kind of underdog tag and the the fact that people are expecting them to win and can that be a galvanizing thing for the team this week mate uh, probably changes individual to individual uh on what what floats every uh every person's boat um yeah uh, I, i'm not sure for for I wouldn't be one for the big motivational speeches and, and trying to drive too much emotion. So uh, you, you'd have to ask uh, the players, I think, individually. Totally. Think it's how, how energising is it as a coach to come up against a side that's multifaceted like kind and then trying to figure out what's going to game plan to be? Yeah, I think uh, that's it, it, when you're doing your analysis and you're, and you're trying to prepare for a team that has so many threats, um, it, it, it makes it very interesting for you. You've really got to apply uh, a lot of thought into how best to to get a, an effective outcome. And you learn quite a lot also by watching it because you um, you see things that you maybe not have seen before. Um, so it's been um, it's been good to it's been good to watch them again.